All right, everybody, we're starting chapter five, section one, fundamental identities. Here are the list of your fundamental identities so far in this class. Reciprocal identities, quotient identities, Pythagorean identities, and even odd identities. We've covered all of these identities so far um, in earlier parts of our text. So you may want to look these up. I will um, be reminding you of what these are as we go forward, but you might want to look them up in your book in earlier chapters. Um, or you can get a summary of all of these identities on page 197, 197 in your textbook. All right. Now in chapter five, we're going to be adding a whole lot of identities to this list. So uh, put your seatbelt on. It's going to be fun. All right, here we go. Example number one, if cosine of x is equal to 5 eighths and x is in quadrant four, uh, find each function value. All right, so here comes the first function value they want you to find. Okay, they want you to find sine of x. You know cosine of x is 5 eighths, so what is sine of x? The identity that you're going to see me use is the following Pythagorean identity. Cosine squared of x plus sine squared of x is equal to 1. So you can, you're going to see me now solve or uh, for sine of x or isolate sine of x. So sine squared of x is equal to 1 minus cosine squared of x using the square root property. Uh, sine of x, oops, sorry, sine of x will be equal to plus or minus the square root of 1 minus cosine squared of x. Okay, now I'm going to move the screen up a little bit. Um, we already know that we can take um, the negative square root uh, because they said that x is in quadrant 4. And in quadrant 4, sine is negative. So sine of x will be equal to negative square root of 1 minus cosine squared of x. Okay? All right, cool. So all I'm going to do now is basically plug in my cosine value and then simplify. So 1 minus, we know cosine of x is 5 eighths. So I want to square that. Okay? Let's simplify this and then we're done with the problem. So then I have sine of x is equal to negative square root of, uh, one is 64, 60 fourths, and uh, 5 eighths squared is 25 over 64. And it's the square root of all of this. So this is equal to the square root of, uh, let's see, what is this? 39, 39 60 fourths. So then the final answer for sine of x is negative square root of 39 over 8. All right, so good job. This is the final answer. All right, very good. All right, let's see what else they want us to find. Okay, it's still the given information. Uh, the given information has not changed. But this time around, they don't want you to find sine of theta. They want you to find tangent of theta. Tangent of theta. So the question is, how do I go from, excuse me, not tangent of theta, tangent of x. The question is, how do I go from the given information of cosine to tangent? Which identity will connect me from cosine to tangent? Um, and again, I always want to try to use the given information um, if possible. So I'm, I'm reminded of this Pythagorean identity, tangent squared of x plus 1 is equal to secant squared of x, okay, secant squared of x. And so um, you may be thinking, well, how does this take me from uh, cosine to tangent? Well, secant is a reciprocal of cosine. So if I just plug in secant here, I can isolate tangent of x and get the solution. So that's my strategy. All right, so then we have uh, tangent squared of x plus 1 is equal to, now if cosine of x is 5 eighths, 
That means secant of x is 8 fifths. All right, so I'm going to say 8 fifths, don't forget, squared. Okay, so then tangent squared of x is equal to, I'm going to subtract 1 at the same time that I'm squaring 8 fifths. So 64 20 fifths minus 1. So then tangent squared of x is equal to 64 20 fifths minus 25 20 fifths. Let's move the screen up a little bit. So then tangent, I'm going to take the square root of both sides at the same time that I'm going to perform that operation of subtraction. Tangent of x is equal to plus or minus the square root of 39 20 fifths. Um, remember that x is in quadrant 4, right? And in quadrant 4, tangent's negative. So tangent of x is equal to negative square root of 39 over 5. All right, good job, you guys. You found uh, the final answer. All right, everybody. Um, the next example, and actually the last example uh, for this section, it's a very short section, is the following. Write the following expression in terms of sine and cosine, and then simplify the expression so that no quotients appear. All right, here is the uh, expression that is given to you. 1 plus tangent... Uh, squared of theta over 1 minus secant squared of theta. This is the expression they're giving you, and they want you to write it in terms of sine and cosine, um, and then simplify. All right, so here we go. I'm going to write everything in terms of sine and cosine, all right? I'm going to change the color so that you can see what the given expression is, and then everything underneath that in a different color will be my work. All right, so here we go. Uh, 1 plus tangent is, by a quotient identity, sine of theta over cosine of theta. So then this is sine of theta uh, over cosine theta. And then this is being squared. That's tangent squared of theta. Um, and then we have 1 minus cosine of theta. Oh, excuse me. Secant is not cosine. Secant is 1 over, right? 1 over cosine of theta squared. All right? Cool. So I wrote everything in terms of sine and cosine, and now I will simplify. All right? So I'm going to continue here to the right, if I can. Uh, this gives us 1 plus sine squared of theta. over cosine squared of theta by the uh, uh, properties of exponents, we know we're supposed to square both the numerator and the denominator, okay? And same thing over here, square one, which is just one, and then square cosine, all right? That's using the, um, the power of a quotient rule for exponents. One minus one over cosine squared of theta. All right, this is the expression that we have now. Um, notice that the LCD is cosine squared of theta. All right, let me move this up a little bit. All right, so get, give us some more room. I'm going to jot that down for us here. Uh, the LCD, the LCD is equal to cosine squared of theta. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to multiply this whole expression by 1, uh, let's see. Uh, multiply the expression by 1, but of course, that expression um, of 1 will be written as cosine squared of theta over cosine squared of theta. So in other words, I want you to multiply the numerator of this fraction by cosine squared of theta, which means multiply 1 by cosine squared of theta, multiply this fraction by cosine squared of theta, and then come down here, multiply this by cosine squared of theta, and this by cosine squared of theta, all right? So this is what we will have. Of course, I need more room again, okay? This is what we're gonna have. All right, in the numerator, I have one plus, all right? I got a peek at what I had there. All right, so one uh, plus 
and then we had sine squared of theta over cosine squared of theta over 1 minus 1 over cosine squared of theta that's what we left off where we left off and now I want you to multiply everything by cosine squared of theta okay so multiply this guy by cosine squared of theta right there multiply this guy by cosine squared of theta multiply this guy by cosine squared of theta multiply this guy by cosine squared of theta and you can see hopefully what's happening here you can see that cosine squared of theta cancels with cosine squared of theta and these cancel as well leaving you with the following uh, sorry maybe I moved up a little too much there M leaving you with the following cosine squared of theta plus sine squared of theta in the numerator over uh, cosine squared of theta minus 1 now I'm hoping that this numerator looks awfully familiar to you it is your Pythagorean identity which is equal to 1 okay now as far as this denominator is concerned let me go off to the side of your paper really quickly and remind you that cosine squared of theta plus sine squared of theta is equal to 1 right all right that must mean that cosine squared of theta minus 1 is equal to negative sine squared of theta did you catch that right if I subtract 1 from both sides and subtract sine squared of theta from both sides this is what I have so therefore cosine squared of theta minus 1 is the same thing as negative sine squared of theta so then this is equal to negative uh, cosecant squared of theta by um, a reciprocal identity so there it is we wrote everything in terms of sine and theta and then we simplify so that no quotients appear so the original expression that we started out with is the, the is equivalent to negative cosecant squared of theta okay guys this completes um, chapter 5 section 1 uh, entitled fundamental identities the next section 5.2 is um, what's next and it is entitled verifying trigonometric identities. I'll see you uh, in that video.